Welcome back to our Marvel Snap deck highlight. Nico Minaru has quickly become my favorite card in the game. She's just so flexible with everything her seven different spells provides. And because there's lots of different things this card can do, the gameplay that she offers tends to be very varied and dynamic in a way that's both fun for you to figure out in a puzzling aspect and a way that's difficult for your opponents to keep up with because they don't know exactly what your output range is going to be at any given point. Today's deck list is essentially a Nico good stuff deck that's top ending powerful tech cards like Shang-Chi and Enchantress to disrupt what our opponent has going on in tandem with playing other cards that power out Nico's best spells like Hood and Black Widow and Mirage, all of whom we don't mind sacrificing to draw two cards or turning into a demon with a 1-6 stat line. The last few slots in this deck get rounded out by a zero sub package that I've really been liking in a variety of shells. Essentially, this package is its namesake, Zero, in tandem with Lizard, who provides five power for two energy, Typhoid Mary, who provides four power or 10 power for four energy, as well as Luke Cage as an additional way to mitigate the downside that those cards bring to the table. Just really efficient stat lines that they put into different locations for their energy costs with great ways to mitigate the drawbacks that they typically have. At any rate, I hope you enjoy the game highlights that I have for here today. I think they do an excellent job of showcasing the variety of gameplay that this deck offers, as well as how potent its tech cards and stat sticks are. If you do enjoy what you see, snap that like button for the rest of the day. Have fun. I put my pile of stats over here. And then, even if they move Vision and play Blue Marvel to win here, we're still winning the others, no problem. Yeah. Victory. Two Ginger for you! Thanks for the brand new primer, I appreciate that. Okay, well, I think we just do this and then we're setting up for a, we're setting up for a turn six Luke Typhoid. Do I do this now? I think I do this now and then I can Cyclops plus Demon on the next turn. Zero is free. Zero uh, takes points off of this. This is a neat good stuff deck. Yep, that is exactly what I was building when I put it together. Gosh, I could also let's just let's just do this. Oh, I should uh, Luke first. This could be like Dust Domain. It's fine, it all worked out. Victory. Midnight Sun variants. Yeah, definitely. It's a status thing. I'll eventually want Golden Ink done everything. 
but I won't I won't split Nico until I have enough boosters to go for inked on her. Do you consider a Zac Zero a Zac target does other cards are drawn to? Well, it probably depends on the, the texture of the rest of my hand if the zero trigger was going to help or hurt on the following turn. You always hold zero for Mary. I think one of the worst things you can do as a gamer is lock yourself into these ideas of you should always do or never do things. So like zero could tag Typhoid in this deck, zero can tag Lizard in this deck, and zero could just be a high power one energy play on the last turn. So like you see our four energy cards at the bottom, a final turn play with this deck can be four energy card plus zero plus Hood's Demon. Do we think I need armor in this matchup? I'm not sure that I do. I might just Viper this across. I might tag another ongoing card here later, so I'm gonna vibe on the Enchantress for now and just play Typhoid out, I think. I don't, I don't want to commit Typhoid into this path because I hopefully with Enchantress won't need uh, won't need too many more cards here. And we definitely want to Enchantress this turn because I want to wipe on going off of these uh, before they can Spectrum. Oh, snap. Yeah, Hood, Hood was a great pickup here for sure. I am. Marvel Snap's most powerful Pokemon, Enchantress. I choose you. Okay, and then in a perfect world here, I want to play around uh, Claw, putting six points into the middle. So Luke is going to put me up to eight. And then Armor would put me to 11, and this puts me to 17. And then we'll play these here and we'll call it a day. Oh, I wonder if they think they still get Spectrum's bonus in the center. They don't. But it might be about to trade some cubes for knowledge here. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least it only cost some two cubes. Yeah, this was why it was important that I Enchantress on five. Victory. Or had priority going into six. I could like zero to play around a Mobius here, but if they're Mobius, I I'm probably dead anyways, so I'm just gonna chill. But next turn we could zero Mary here. Maybe we could zero Mary without armor. Playing Mary out proactively is a little bit of a risk because um, they're probably a Shang-Chi deck. I suppose the Diablo space could kill the Gamma Lab here, but I think we're still in a fine spot even if that, that happens. So I'm going to snap just with the Shang-Chi on deck already for it. Definitely a Shang-Chi deck. I think I do this this turn for the sake of resource efficiency. It hurts our cube equity a little bit, but I think I'm going to need to spend all my energy every turn this game.
Are we in the awkward drops? I mean, I think we're in a fine spot here, right? I'm gonna play this over here and ship it. Yeah, my Shadow King stays fine because of Luke. Is that true? Then we win, right? Yep. Victory. So when the location happens, Enchantress effect has turned off the armor. And it gets destroyed. Uh, we snap uh, turn one Viper into Hood in this household. Also, they're Thanos. And I think I think tur I think Viper into Hood is very good into this Thanos deck because their their deck is very board space hungry. Very surprised to see them play here on the first turn. I think that's probably wrong for them. That's, uh, that's less common. Are there just reality starting? Sure. There's a good chance they don't have another stone that draws a card right now just because they power stoned last turn. I think, I think I'm just going to Mirage. Get a little bit of info about what they have going on. This opponent's probably fun at parties. I kind of wouldn't mind drawing a Vibranium. So I think I'm going to Typhoid Berry here. Onslaught makes me want less Vibranium in my deck. Because it means that... Uh, means that I want to draw Enchantress. So don't want to enchantress my loot cage. Hopefully this is Dino Stone and then we win. Oh, we got him. Enchantress is. Enchantress is eating good right now. The O5 Swarm here, which is nice. Do I snap on this? I guess the Black Widow is going to give them energy, but I think that's fine. The conditions are conditional on it being destroyed by the thing. That was the perfect draw because it denies them the ability to use the Widow for a profit.
Okay, I mean, they get to draw a card here now, but they have uh, one less swarm. Opponent snapped. Snapping me, really? Final answer. Um, Luke gets me two more back up to 20, and this gets me to 27, and then so long as I beat 12 over here, we're good to go. And then this beats Chavez or Chavez plus Swarm, and it ties Apocalypse plus Swarm discard Chavez, but I think that's unlikely. I think they're discarding Apocalypse. They're not going to get plus two to Mobius. Mobius is Enchantress. And again, this is... People always ask, Jeff, how do I get better at Marvel Snap? Th this is what you need to be able to do. You need to be able to look at the game on the last turn Victory. and know what is my opponent's output range and how do they apply that output range to the board? And can I sequence in a way that lets me beat it? I don't really want to put Hood Viper into Monster Metropolis. Do you think Release Kitty would be better for the game than our current? Release Kitty is kind of just a different card that's powerful in different ways. She explicitly doesn't let you manage priority the way current Kitty does, but she's stronger with other things. Snap. Definitely gonna snap here because they're gonna move this Nightcrawler and then the Abbey will be mostly full and we'll both draw a card. What was the OG Kitty's text box? The OG Kitty's text box, Kitty stayed in play, and you could choose to pull her back to your hand at any point. It was a really neat design. But it was only changed not because she was too powerful, it was changed because it was causing the game to crash, and they couldn't fix the game crash, so they redesigned her. So they emergency disabled her and then rebuilt her. I think I'm fine just playing big into Monster Metropolis here. It uses my energy very efficiently this turn. It uses up my zero in a clean way. So, like, not completely free of risk, but pretty reasonable choice, all things considered. not moving any of my cards because I assume they're moving their Craven and I don't want to give him extra stats. There's a number of games where having priority doesn't matter but like for example in a deck like this if we have priority we could play an armor on the path they're going to Eliath and then stop them. We just do this it puts us to 21 on the left i don't expect their deck to have extra ways to get points into there Victory. i could move vision and shang craven yeah but then how do i win one of the other paths that's all snap the like button if you'd be so kind and check back in again tomorrow for another highlight